Thank you. God bless all of you, and God bless our great country. Well, Democrats have their work cut out for them. I just listened to J.D. Vance's full speech. It's about 36-ish minutes long, and I have to say I felt something in that audience that I really hadn't felt since about 2008. Uh, in 2008, I went to both Republican and Democratic rallies. This was back when I was in high school, speech and debate, and this was a pretty normal thing you would do for an election year. Uh, anyway, the energy that I felt in that RNC at the same moment that JD was speaking felt exactly like the energy that I felt in 2008 when Obama came to the stage and said, this is the change you can believe in. The hope that you can believe in. The same feeling is what I got. That same electric energy is what I got out of that speech. Now, here's a summary of what was said. Uh, I do mention that up front, though, because obviously I can't put statistics or numbers on that. That's just a personal feeling. It's a bias uh, towards uh, what I saw here compared to what I saw in 08. So it's an opinion. Take it for what it's worth. But here's what JD said. And he gave a, he did a very great job. Uh, he, he has the... He has a little bit more of that uh, humbleness to him than somebody like Vivek, right? Vivek comes across as a little bit more sort of like Iron Man, uh, strong, angry uh, at some times, which is a little bit more Trumpian. JD gives you a little bit more of that homey vibe. Uh, you know, hey, my my grandma, my, my, my grandma, she, she had... 19 guns littered throughout her house, fully loaded because she wanted to protect her family. People loved it. I mean, people were cheering uh, for the grandma. They were cheering for JD's mom after, uh, you know, he mentioned that she's been clean and sober for 10 years since he grew up with her and uh, as, as she was suffering through addiction and uh, his grandma took care of him. But let's go through the speech in order here. So... J.D.'s speech, to sum it up, is basically Trump has given, given everything to fight for America in the last eight years. And quite frankly, this is a country that needs a Donald Trump. Donald Trump, after being shot, called for unity. And he's a tough guy. And that's the same toughness that you want against the adversaries that fear him. This is a reference to, you know, Xi Jinping and, and Putin or whoever else, right? Uh, he accepted his VP nomination. Multiple crowd chant breakouts over JD, JD, that happened multiple times. He gives a few references of how throughout his schooling, Joe Biden signed on to things like NAFTA, which yes, Joe Biden voted yes on that in 1993, which he says distributed jobs to Mexico and took away American jobs. Look, a lot of people are a big fan still today of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Free trade between Canada and Mexico has, has been a staple, really, since 1993. I mean, we're at 31 years of NAFTA here. If it was really bad at, at, at this point, it would have probably been overturned. But don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not trying to shill for NAFTA and anti-JD here, but uh, I, I, it was an example he gave. Uh, so comments, leave comments down below on your thoughts on it. I want to hear, but it really ties into his economic messaging, which his economic messaging is why are we sending jobs or providing jobs to other countries when we should be giving those jobs to Americans, when we should have more stamps that say made in the USA. He says specifically, we should be buying oil, not from people in the Middle East, but from American citizens. He also says, uh, keep in mind, it is worth noting that American oil is substantially cleaner than oil around the rest of the world. And you could even go a step further and argue California oil is some of the cleanest oil. I know that sounds ironic, but yes, we drill off the coast of California and inland in California. In this town that I'm in, we have oil rigs, uh, pump jacks. Anyway, so... Um, and I'm in California. I, I know people make fun of me for that. Like, what are you going to leave? People don't realize I'm like in Ventucky out here. It's it's like, anyway, we'll talk about that a different day. So uh, 
talks about sending the illegals back, that they shouldn't be taking American jobs, uh, and that we have to focus on American jobs, more American jobs, better American wages, making more things in America. Uh, and, and this really aligns with what we saw with Donald Trump talking about, hey, what are we paying to protect Taiwan for when we're essentially giving them the chip industry on a silver platter? They should be paying us for this form of protection. Uh, so this was really the messaging here. It was a lot about unity. There was a portion slamming Biden, but not much. There's talk about meeting his wife at Yale Law. Keep in mind, he got basically a full ride to Yale Law after enlisting in the Marines in 2003 after 9-11. Uh, he worked as, he didn't mention this, but uh, you could look this up pretty easily. He worked as a combat journalist and a public affairs officer when he was in Iraq. Uh, okay, so uh, this gives you a little bit on JD. I do have a quick Biden update as well, which is, I think, pretty important. Uh, and so I'm going to give you this Biden update, but I just want to say this was really powerful by JD. This is a lot more powerful than what I've seen from uh, Kamala. And uh, this is this was probably a really good ticket choice from Donald Trump. Uh, I think he really picked a homie person, whether you like him or not, this is just, just my opinion, right? Uh, and he's really trying to pull off a balanced ticket. And this was a an excellent speech to scream exactly that. So I, I don't actually have a lot of criticisms here. I mean, the only real criticism I have is on NAFTA and, and I, don't have an, I don't have enough to really complain about NAFTA. Uh, so I'd love to hear your criticisms in the comment on it. If you've been in the comments, if you've been affected by NAFTA or you've benefited from NAFTA, I'd love to hear it. I want to be open-minded and, and I want everybody to be able to see your thoughts on that. So leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe too. So now on Biden, there's some breaking news. While JD was speaking, you actually had, quote, massive drama right now in the White House. Kamala advisors straight up telling Joe Biden here. I'll just I'll just put this up on screen straight up telling Biden advisors. It's time to pass the buck. Exact word use per White House official. This is the first direct open confrontation at the senior level. And apparently a phone call that would mark the second known conversation between Pelosi and Biden uh, just occurred. And a Biden told uh, or Pelosi told Biden privately in a recent conversation that polling shows the president cannot defeat Trump and Biden could destroy Democrats chance of winning the House in November if he continues to seek a second term. Biden continues to be defiant. At one point, uh, Pelosi tried getting uh, one of Biden's longtime advisors to get on the line to talk over data about how he's losing, so on and so forth. Uh, there's uh, now a CNN exclusive reporting on exactly this. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi privately told Joe Biden in a recent conversation that polling shows the president cannot defeat Donald Trump. Uh, and then we're sort of getting reiterations of this. So, Pretty big update here. Anyway, I'll keep you updated with what's going on out there. As always, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much for subscribing and supporting the channel. Hopefully this was a useful distillation for you. Uh, and um, wish you the best out there. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. These things that you told us here, I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold law long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.